Tracy, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to get started in a couple of minutes. Looking forward to having a great time discussing the Word of God tonight. I tell you, it's really been very enriching to my spirit. Just being able to teach the Word from the battlefield of the mind the way God has given it to me. And it's truly mind-changing and mind-blowing if you allow the Spirit of God to intervene in your life. Pray you're having a great day. started tonight with our lesson. We're going to open up in a word of prayer. And I pray that you all had a wonderful, blessed day and that you're anticipating God to speak into your heart tonight from his word to help, to help empower, to strengthen, to encourage you in your walk with the Lord, to help you bring changes in the way we think about ourselves and the way we think about others. And allow the word of God to transform our hearts from the heart of the world that we have the heart of the spirit, which operates in the fruit of the spirit, the love of God. So let me turn this music down and we'll get started in just a moment. So let's go into a word of prayer. God, Father God, we just come before your awesome presence tonight to say thank you. 
We thank you, Lord God, that you are supreme. You are sovereign. You are holy. You are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. You're the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence dwelling in our midst tonight, O oh God, as we engage in your word. I pray, O oh God, that you remove the busyness from the day from our minds, that we have clear conscience to focus on you, Father God, speaking into our spirit the word of life, to bring forth life-changing encounters from the spirit of the living God. Forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash us in the blood of the Lamb purify thoughts and our action now, O oh God, that we have nothing to hinder us from receiving from you, O oh God, the engrafted word of God, that you, Father God, would change our attitudes, change our lives, that everything we do, we do to promote your glory, that you would have dominion and authority in our lives from the day forward. And Lord God, ask that you cause me to decrease, that you increase, release wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation. As I speak your word, Father, your word will go forth with power and authority, God, to help your people grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Deacon Alec. God bless you, sir. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. You know, last week I didn't have class. I played hooky. I'm just going to tell the truth. Decided to go out and do a pre-birthday celebration. But I tell you, I had a, a wonderful time on my birthday, which is last week, Wednesday as well. God has really been good. God showed up in such an extraordinary way. I had a chance to spend time with my pastor's auntie, uh, uh, Velma Bryant. Her birthday was last week as well on the same day of Wednesday the 9th. And we had us a wonderful time with family and friends just hanging out together. And I, I just feel so blessed to be able to turn 57 and still be here, still able to teach God's word, still here to be here to encourage other people in this walk of life, no matter what challenges they encounter, no matter what struggles and habits they deal with, that you are still more than a conqueror to Jesus Christ our Lord. And God has given us the victory. And we can overcome any obstacle, any trial, any test, Anything the enemy throws at us to throw us for a loop, to knock us off course, Jesus Christ has the ability and the power to grab you by the hand and put you right back on track. And that is great news to know that God is on our side as the reigning king. Amen. Two weeks ago, we, as we started the lesson, turn this music off for a second. Two weeks ago, we started the lesson, um, why shouldn't I be jealous and envious when everybody else it's better off than I am. That's the question. And this is the wilderness mentality number nine. There are 10 wilderness experiences that we discussed throughout the lessons when we started on last year, sometime during the month of April last year, we began to discuss these different lessons from the battlefield of the mind. And one thing about it, when you have any type of stronghold in your life, it brings you to a place of captivity in the wilderness and only God has the power and the ability to set you free from the wilderness mentality. And one of the points we talked about as a wilderness mentality was uh, the importance of the mind. When you recognize your mind, it has the power to control everything about your life. It controls whether you live or whether you die because the mind is connected to the spiritual realm up in the spirit of the living God. And where our minds are, our minds gives us the opportunity to produce life just from a thought. And one thing about the thoughts, our thoughts are in a heavenly realm. And one thing we talked about uh, before was the realm of the mind. Our thought life, we cannot see our thought life, but we can think thoughts. We cannot see words coming out of our mouth, but we can speak words and expect the results of whatever we spoke to manifest in our life or the life of whoever we're speaking it to. It's the same with the mindset in the wilderness mentality. The mind is very important to take control of your thought life every day of your life because if you don't control your thought life, the enemy controls your thought life. Not only does he control your thought life, but he begins to, 
to, uh, I would say, infect your thought life. He infect your thought life with negative words, negative ideas, until it demise your character. It demise your reason for living, and it makes you feel worthless and inadequate that what's the use of even living? But God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, has brought us the remedy, which is the word of God, which we have been discussing in the battle of the mind these last several lessons. And I tell you, these are life-changing lessons. These lessons will manifest in your life when you allow the spirit of God to be rooted and grounded in your heart. These lessons will change your entire destiny. Because the word of God, it showed us through all the lessons that we don't control our thought life, recognize the condition of our minds. Our minds would keep us wandering. That's why there's so many people deal with mental illness. Their minds are wandering. I was thinking about this uh, recently. I said, why isn't so many people committing suicide in this season? And the Lord spoke to me and said, because they don't know how to control their thought life. So the enemy infects their mindset. He gives them the idea of feeling worthless. Nobody cares about me. I'm never going to be successful in life. So they begin to already speak negative over themselves for their own destruction. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they say, your belly will be satisfied by the fruit thereof. So whatever I speak over myself, either it's going to be words of life or it's going to be words of death. And we have to really be careful, even allow other people to speak words over you. Because I remember growing up as a child, I love my dad dearly. But my dad used to, used to tell my mom, that boy ain't going to be no good but a sissy. Because I hung around my mom all the time. And you know what? The negative words impacted my life. So I ended up living a promiscuous lifestyle in, in different types of behavior patterns because of the words that were spoken over me as a child begins to manifest and grow as I grew. If you're not speaking words of life over your children and you keep on speaking these negative things about they're just like their daddy or they're just like their mama who is no good, ain't going to never amount to anything good in life, going to always be a vagabond. All these things are negative words that impacts a person's life. And that is an effective mindset from the enemy because it destroys your future until you have a God encounter of the most high God through Jesus Christ coming to your thought life to change your thought life from the worldly mentality to the mind of Christ to let you know that you are a person of royalty and a person of value in the eyes of God. So we discussed about the battlefield of the mind. We discussed the condition of the mind. We, we discussed about the wandering mind and a normal mind. We discussed about a confused mind. The wisdom mentalities, my future may be determined by my past and my present. Someone do it for me. I don't want to take any responsibility. Number two. Number three, it says, please make everything easy. I can't take it if things are too hard. Number four, I can't help it. I'm just addicted to grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. Number five, don't make me wait for anything. I deserve everything immediately. Number six, my behavior may be wrong, but it's not my fault. Number uh, seven, my, my life is so miserable, I feel sorry for myself because my life is so wretched. Number eight, I don't deserve God's blessing because I'm not worthy. And number nine, when we just started two weeks ago, why should I be jealous and envious when everybody else is better off than I am? And our final lesson, when we get into it, is going to be, I'm going to do it my way or not at all. How many times have you crossed someone with any one of these behavior patterns who have spoken these words out of their mouth because they don't know the gospel truth about themselves? How many times have you been victimized by the enemy and you spoke these things over yourself? My future is determined by my past and my present. That's a lie from the devil. 
Because if your future is determined by your past, boy, if you had a messed up past, that means your life ain't gonna never amount to anything. Matter of fact, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. So your future is gonna lead you to death. Because if your past and your present is no good, you can't expect anything good out of your future until you have the God encounter in your what? Thought life. When the word gets in your thought life, so as a man thinketh in his heart, your soul mind, so is he. So the Holy Spirit engages our thought life with the word of God and empowers us with the ability to rise above the mind of the enemy. Someone do it for me. I don't want to take any responsibility. How many times you wanted blessings, but didn't want to do the work for the blessing? How many times God gave you a divine order for ministry to do a certain thing, but you were so lazy and lackadaisical, you didn't try to do it? And that was the very thing that God wanted to use in your life to make you successful. A slothful person talks about in Proverbs is so lazy, they won't even put their hands to their mouth to feed themselves. So they end up poor. Why? Because of the thought life. The thought life of poverty rests in the heart. So my thought life, my conversation, and my heart are not lining up with the truth of God's word. Guess who I'm lining up with? Old Slewfoot, the devil. So whatever the devil dictates in your thought life, through your ear gates, through your eye gates, it goes where? Into the heart. So when it goes to the heart, it comes out the mouth. Because I manifest what I hear and what I think and I speak what I got in my heart. Jesus puts it this way. It's not what goes to a man that defiles him, but what comes out of that man that defiles him. So if my thought life is predicated on my behavior, I'm, I'm, I'm messed up. I better check myself. Because I'm on a path of destruction. Broad the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life and peace. So if I'm going to trust God's ability to lead God and direct me, then I need to stay connected to the word. I need to stay connected to the presence of God. Please don't make me wait for eat. So please don't make me wait. So please make everything easy. I can take it, can't take it if it's too hard. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ are still sitting on the sideline complaining and grumbling and mumbling. They're saying things are too hard. Ministry is too hard. The life I live is too difficult. I'm always struggling. I'm, I'm never going to seem to pay all these bills. I'm always have all this debt. I'm going to die with debt. I got debt. I'm going to die with debt. If that's your confession, you keep on living your confession of the way you want to live your life. Because I tell you, my Bible tells me, that my God shall supply all my need according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So if God promises this, guess what? He will deliver me. God bless you, Pastor Denise. Thanks for joining tonight. You have to make a choice of what you're going to speak out of your mouth because you have to think about what you think about before you think it. Your thought life are controlled by the words you're allowed to come out of your mouth. I can't help it. I'm just addicted to grumbling and fault finding and complaining. And that's your attitude. You need deliverance. Because all these things I mentioned in the wooden mentalities are the things that the enemy uses for your own demise. Don't make me wait for anything. I deserve everything immediately. My behavior may be wrong, but it's not my fault. So I blame everybody else for my life being a mess right now. So I'm a drug addict, I'm a pimp, I'm a prostitute, I'm a liar, I'm a harmonger, I'm a robber, I'm a thief. It, it's my, my parents' fault because they were doing the same thing. And I saw them do it. So if that is their fault, the reason my life turned the way it is. The devil is a lie. You are held accountable for your own sinful life and your sinful ways. It's your choice. It's your decision to choose the results of your life. Without Christ, 
your results in the end of your life is destruction and, and in, in the hellfire you're going to go and burn for eternity with Satan and the fallen angels who abandoned a position in heaven. But with Christ in your life, guess what? He's taking your sins, your mess ups, your hang ups, your habits, your addictions, your pains, your hurts, discouraging moments, all those things. He took it upon himself that you don't have to bear the punishment for it. But one thing about life, people always talk about karma. But the Bible calls the law of reciprocation. Because whatever I sown in my life, be it good or bad, there's always going to be some reciprocation going to come from behind it. <coughs> because I, whatever I sown, I'm going to reap. So I'm going to reap what I sow. If I sow corruption, I'm going to reap corruption. But if I sow righteousness, I'm going to reap life abundant in the presence of the Lord. My life is so miserable. I feel sorry for myself because my life is so wretched. So if that's the type of mindset you have, God can deliver you. But he's only looking for a person whose heart is in a place of conviction. Where I'm convicted of my sinful way and I realize now I need the Savior in my life to deliver me and set me free. And guess what? He takes that wretchedness, that discarded life of yours, and he cleans it up, he purifies it, he places himself inside of you by the Spirit of the living God to bring you righteousness and truth, that your life would now be conducive to the will of God to obey his truth and follow his commands. I don't deserve God's blessings because I'm not worthy. Many times I used to feel that way myself. I don't deserve God to bless me because I keep, saying, keep making the same mistakes. I keep falling to the same old temptation, the same old trial, keep failing, failing in this area, failing in that area. I only need, deserve God to bless me. But you know one thing about God? He said his grace is sufficient. That in your weaknesses, I can glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. That's what Paul wrote in his word. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 12. He, he wrote that because it's so important for you to recognize that the life that I'm living is not based on me. It's based on what Christ has done for me. Which leads into our lesson tonight. Why should I be jealous and envious when everybody else is better off than I am. In John chapter 21, Jesus was conversing with Peter regarding the hardship that he would have to endure in order to serve and glorify him. As soon as Jesus had said these things to him, Peter turned and saw John and immediately asked Jesus what his will was for him. Peter wanted to make sure that if, if he was going to have to go through rough times ahead, so would John. In answer, Jesus politely told Peter to mind his own business. Minding, having your own mindset on other people's business will keep us in the wilderness. Jealousy, envy, and mentally comparing ourselves and our circumstances with others is the wilderness mentality. Minding, having our own mindset on other people's business Comparing ourselves to other people, comparing our circumstances, is what's going to keep you in the wilderness. Here's the scripture. St. John chapter 21, verse 21 and 22. When Peter saw him, John, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I want him to stay, survive, live, till I come, what is that to you? What concern is it of yours? You follow me. And this is during the time when Jesus was at the Last Supper and he was letting the disciples know that the time is coming close where he's going to be persecuted. And Peter, being, being uh, proactive, want to find out, okay, Lord, if you're going to suffer, then I'm going to suffer with you. Then John needs to suffer too. 
And Jesus pretty much told him, John, mind your business. It's not about you. If I want him to suffer, he gonna suffer. If I don't want him to suffer, he gonna live and I'll suffer. Because it's not predicated on your decision of how you feel what people should go through. When God has a plan, God has a purpose, God has a will for your life, what you go through is what God has deemed to be so in your life to define your characteristics, to make you who you are to be for him and for the kingdom of God. Beware of jealousy and envy, a calm and undisturbed mind and a heart of a life and health of the body. But envy, jealousy, and wrath are like rottenness to the bones. Proverbs 14, verse 30. Proverbs 14, verse 30. Envy will cause a person to behave in a way that is callous and rude, hardened heart. Envy will cause your heart to be hard, be hardened towards other people and, and crude and rude and, and, and stubborn and hateful towards other people, animalistic at times. And it will cause you to have outbursts towards other people because you don't agree with the way their life is, the way they're living. The way people live their life is their decision. The way you live your life is your decision. You cannot make another person live the way you want them to live. They have to learn for themselves what trials and what tests and what persecutions, what problems, what hangups, what disappointments, different things are going to happen in their life that they have to bear for themselves. You cannot determine and predicate the life any other person should live but you got to mind your own business and take care of your own life. Envy caused Joseph's brother to sell him to slavery. They hated him because their father loved him so much. So we talked about don't compare and don't compete. And this is uh, St. Luke chapter 22, verse 24 to 26. St. Luke chapter 22, verse 24 through 26. Now an eager contention rose among them as to which of them was considered and reputed to be the greatest. And Jesus said to them, the king of the Gentiles are defied by them and exercise lordship, ruling as emperor gods over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors and well-doers. But this is not so to be with you. On the contrary, let him who is the greatest among you become like the youngest. Let him who is the chief leader and a leader like one who serves. So this is a common trait of the insecure. If we are not secure concerning our own worth and values as unique individuals, we would naturally find ourselves competing with anyone who appears to be successful and doing well. So that's what jealousy would do. That's what comparing yourself to somebody else would do. It will put you in the mindset of competition. If they try starting a business and they got the resources to grants and favor from other people, then let me do the same thing they did so I can be like them. But the thing is, God doesn't show partiality or favoritism towards anybody. If God deems a business to be something that he wants you to have in a particular, particular area, in a certain region, God will give you the knowledge, he'll give you the wisdom, he'll give you the resources to make that thing come to pass in your life. So it's your determination of how much effort you put into the thing God told you to do to make it happen. You have a lot of people say God gave them a business, but they don't want to do the footwork. A lot of people say God wants them to prosper, but they don't want to study the word. They don't want to study knowledge, get information, to find out how can I become successful in my business. You're like being a minister. You cannot teach the word of God if you don't study the word of God. How can you tell somebody else how to live if you don't even know the word of God for yourself? That's called a hypocrite, a pretender. There's a lot of people in positions in the church are hypocritical and they're pretenders because they confess they know God, but Jesus puts it this way. You know him from afar. See, your lips, you worship me, but your hearts are far from me. So we have to determine in ourselves, what is it 
God is saying to me in his word, and how can I apply it to my life to become what God wants to be successful in life? Learning that I was an individual, that God had, has a unique personal plan for my life, has indeed been one of the most valuable and precious freedoms from the Lord that he has granted for me. I'm assured that I need not to compare myself or ministry with anyone else. So when you know the plan that God has for you, you know the purpose God has placed you on this earth, you know the future God has for you or where you're heading, which is the vision God given you, you don't have to compete with nobody else. You just live the life to the full the way God ordained for you to be and let God handle the details. But if the Lord gave you a vision, it's a guarantee God will give you the provision. That means everything that you need to make this vision become fluent and, and successful in your life, God will do what he promised to manifest that thing in your life. Avoid worldly competition. Avoid worldly, com worldly competition. Let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, competitive and challenging and provoking and irritating one another, envying and being jealous of one another. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. According to the world system, the best place to be ahead of everyone else is the best place to be ahead of everyone else. Popular thinking will say that we should try to get to the top no matter who we have to hurt on the way up. But the Bible teaches us that there is no such thing as real peace until we are delivered from the need to compete with others. There's no true success in anything God has given you instructions to do if you're in the mindset of competition, you will never find yourself being successful in anything God has deemed for you to do in this life trying to compete with somebody else. You have pastors trying to compete to be the best hoopers to anybody else. You got teachers trying to be the best teachers to out-teach somebody else because I know a lot, I study a lot, I want to outdo everybody else. Humility is the key to the kingdom of God to make you successful. So if I learned a lot from God's word, I don't know everything. My own personal self, I don't know the whole Bible. You got people that study the Bible from, end to the, from the end to the beginning, beginning to the end, and know everything about the Bible, but don't have no spirit. You have a lot of head knowledge about the word of God, and it profit you nothing. But I can know a few verses of what God says to me and the Holy Spirit inside of me give me such power and authority to operate in those few scriptures I know and I become successful. Because I don't have to be in competition to prove that, hey, I'm a minister of God. Look at me. I'm a man of God. I'm a pastor. I'm a leader. I'm a shepherd. I'm this or I'm that. When God says promotion, comes not from the north, south, east, or west, but come from the Lord, which is an indication that if God has a way that's better than what I'm doing, guess what he does? He manifests his ways to us. He shows us his ideas. He gives us his thought life on what we can do to become more submitted to his authority and to his will, that our lives would be humble and walk in obedience to his word. To everything else, which is the benefits of being obedient to God's word, we begin to gravitate to me the promises and the blessings and the favor God has for me. So anything that I need, guess what? God does it by faith. Hebrews 11 1 says, now faith is the sum of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Why? I can't see the favor with my natural eye. But I know God gives me favor until it manifests. I can't see the thoughts of God until I study his word and God reveals it to me by the spirit. I can't know the heart of God until God reveals me from the word what his heart says about my life. 
And once I gravitate to the word of God, I knew his mind, I knew his heart, I knew his ideas, I, I knew his leadership, I knew his direction. And guess all I do? Just humbly submit to it and walk in it. So we don't have to go around challenging and provoking other folk and irritating people just to prove who I am. So many people, I get this a lot. Certain people around, around where I live at, because they know I'm a man of God, they like to challenge me. They like to talk about me. They like to slander me. But you know one thing about it? I trust in Jesus. I stand on the word of God. And I pray. Because the Bible tells us, we ain't going to argue with nobody about who you are. But he says, be ready to give an account when someone asks, some, uh, someone asks you what's the reason for your hope. That's in Christ Jesus. So if someone comes to me with some sense and say, what is the reason why you're always so happy? What's the reason why you always be full of joy? How come you, it's like, it's like nothing will ever go wrong in your life. I can give them a reason for my hope because I found out is in Christ Jesus. So anything that happens to me, just because trouble comes, don't mean I have to boast about it. Just because I have a bad day, I have to tell the whole world I'm having a bad day. I've learned through the years is how to get into my secret closet, follow me, and go on my knees before God in prayer and tell God, God, I'm having a bad day. I need your presence, God, to strengthen me, to empower me, to, to restore me right now, God. Restore the joy of thy salvation and help me, God, to overcome this situation in my life. Lord, these people are talking about me. These folks are slandering me over here, God. They're trying to provoke me, God. But I ask that you bless my enemy. You said in your word, God, bless them that persecute me and say all manner of evil against me falsely for your name's sake. But so persecuted and prosper before me. These that love my enemy, do good to them, and bless them. God, I want you to bless my enemy. And guess what? I get so much peace just knowing I took the, the weight of the persecution off of myself and I put it back on God. And when you have that type of mindset, it doesn't matter what people do or say or try to knock you off course. If you have your own personal conviction, you're going to stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ with confidence and boldness, knowing that it's the Lord who is for you and he's more than they who can be against you. So we got to keep ourselves focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and our mindsets to change. We should definitely do our best on the job. There is nothing wrong with wanting to do well and advance in the chosen profession. But I encourage you to remember that promotion for the believer comes from God and not from man. So God gives us favor with him and with others if here's the conjunction God gives us favor with him and with others if we do things his way. Plain and simple. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. If we do things God's way, God will cause favor to fall in your lap. Every way you turn, you find yourself gravitating to the promise of God that God has for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. I'm going to turn to Proverbs. I'm going to read this. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. It says, let not mercy, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So thou shalt find good, find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So thou, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man.
So what he's talking about here is let the mercy, when God should allow you to fall into judgment condemnation, he showed you mercy. And let the truth, what God says about you, that you are clothed in righteousness. You've been taken out the world and brought into his presence, created his image and likeness. Find that truth about your neck. In other words, keep it in you. Keep it on you. Write them on the table of thy heart. So every day when I get up, God, I apply this word to my heart today. Father, I thank you that the word of God says that I'll find favor and good understanding son of God and, and, and with men to trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean out to our own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him. You should direct my path. God, I apply this word to my heart right now in the name of Jesus that everywhere I go, God, the word follows me. The word goes before me. The word surrounds me. And I guarantee that the word would keep you in the mind of Christ because you're learning how to yield, surrender, and release yourself into the will of God. Glory to God in the highest. Jealousy and envy are torments from hell. Jealousy and envy are torments from hell. I spent many years being jealous and envious of anyone who looked better than I did or had talents I didn't have. I secretly lived in competition with others in ministry. It was very important to me that my ministry be, be bigger in size, better in attendance, more prosperous, etc., than anyone else's. If another person's ministry surpassed mine in any way, I wanted to be happy for the individual because I knew God's I knew what it was with God's will and in his way, but something in my soul just would, would not allow it to be so. So if someone advances beyond where you are in ministry, rejoice with them because your time is coming. Encourage them to keep doing what they're doing. Don't get jealous. Don't get envious. Don't get stubborn. Don't get stuck in the mindset of torment that I can be better than them. I'm going to try to do my best to succeed them because I, I, I feel I, I can do the better what they're doing. I found as I grew in knowledge of who I was in Christ and not in my works, I gained freedom in not having to compare myself or anything I did with anybody else. When you learn how to get the know-how from the word of God, how to work the word so the word can work for you, to make you successful in the things of God, guess what? You don't have to compare yourself with nobody else. The more I learn to trust God, the more freedom I enjoy in these areas. So the more I trust, lean, and confidently rest on the finished work of the cross that Christ has paid the price for my success, my redemption, my deliverance, my victory, guess what? I don't have to compare myself with nobody else. Because the Father loves me and will do whatever it takes for my best to be the results of what he wants for me. The Father loves us so much, he will do whatever it takes to make you successful according to his will. Not your will, not your way of doing it, not your own mindset, not your attitude, but according to his will. So what does God, so what does God, what God does for you or for me may, may not be the same as somebody else's, but we must remember what Jesus said to Peter, don't be concerned about what I choose to do with somebody else, just follow me. So we have to keep ourselves subservient to the Lordship of Jesus Christ to follow his authority, follow his leadership. And I guarantee you fighters are being successful. Glory to God in the highest. Amen, amen, amen. God arranged even quite often in a way that we could would not choose because he knows what we really need. I need to get rid of my bad attitude, which much more than I needed, and whatever it was that I, I was believing for. It is important for me to arrange our circumstances in such a way that we have eventually faced ourselves. Otherwise, we never experience freedom. 
if you don't get rid of that compete, competing attitude, the jealousy, the envious, those will be the things that will hinder you from walking in the promises that God has for you. You have to learn how to face that face of the enemy that you see in the mirror. Face the face of the enemy that you see in the mirror. And tell that devil that today, devil, I'm not going to follow your leadership. I'm not going to follow your authority. You have no right to torment me. You have no right to make me competitive. You have no right to make me follow after your plan that you have for my life. For today, I'm going to die to self. I'm going to put on the mind of Christ. I'm going to put on full armor to stand against the wild of the devil. And I'm walking forward, following God as he leads me for the best things of my life to be successful. As long as the enemy can hide in our souls, he will always have certain amounts of control over us. As long as the enemy hides within our souls, he will continue to have full authority and control of your life. But when God exposes him, we are on our way to freedom. If we put ourselves in the hands of God and permit him to do quickly what he desires to do in our life, glory to God in the highest. It is so awesome that when we recognize that we've been in bondage for so long, they, some people don't even realize they're in bondage, they're in bondage. But when God reveals to you that you're stuck in a place in your mindset in the wilderness, guess what? Like the children of Israel, a 11 day journey took them 40 years and the older generation of dying off in the wilderness and the new generation entered into the promised land. Why? Because the mindsets, they were stuck in bondage. But God never gave up on his people. He always had a remedy. He always had a plan. He had a remnant to bring the redemption. But it took the new generation to enter into the promised land in order for things to fall in line with the plan of God, to bring for the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So all these things enemy does to control our minds, control our actions, control our lives, when we learn how to put ourselves right back in the hand of the Lord, God promises he will rule over us, he will lead us, he will direct us, he will guide us in his will and his plan and the desires he wants to do in our lives to fulfill his glory. God had, in fact, already purchased a purpose for my life that the ministry he would make me steward over was to be quite large and reach millions of people by radio, television, internet, seminars, books, and all forms of media and recorded messages. But he would not bring me into the fullness of it except to the, except to the degree that I grew up in him. So Joyce Meyer says her ministry, God already deemed to be successful, to become a millionaire to reach millions of people. God already promises to be so, but it took her mindset to change her thought life, to submit to Christ and to grow up in him, in order for these things that God promised to fulfill his vision and his plan for her life to come to pass. Get a new mindset. Get a new mindset. Beloved, I wish above all that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Third John, verse two, third John, verse two. Beloved, child of God, brother and sister, I wish, I desire, I want above all things that you and me would prosper, become successful, become an overachiever and be in health even as our soul mind prospers. When your mind becomes prosperous in the things of God, 
your life begins to change and transition from darkness to light to get a revelation of the benefit that God has for your life to become successful. Consider the scripture carefully. God desires to bless us even more than we desire to be blessed. But he loves us enough to not bless us beyond our capacity to handle the blessings properly and to continually giving him glory. So God, he wants to bless you. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be, be able to do anything you purpose to do for the kingdom of God. But he's not going to give you what you can't handle. God only knows where your mindset are and what you can handle when it comes to prosperity. God knows he can't give certain people millions of dollars because they have lower than a year. But if God gave you a million, he knows you're successful in your mindset because you're prospering in your mindset. So if I gave you this million, you're going to have a creative mindset to on how I can benefit the kingdom of God with this million. Everything that God blesses you with is for to promote his glory. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the more I proclaim the gospel, the more successful I am right here in my thought life. Because I'm learning how to break the mind of the enemy, that mind-binding spirit we talked about in previous lessons, the mind-binding spirit of the enemy, the mind control. We're breaking the power of our thought life, and we're learning how to submit to the mind of Christ, that Christ will have dominion and authority where? In our thought life that our lives will follow suit in the plan, the will, the purpose that God has established for each and one of us. Jealousy, envy, and comparing ourselves with others are childish. They belong entirely to the flesh and have nothing to do with spiritual things. But jealousy is one of the major causes for the wilderness living. Jealousy is one of the major causes for wilderness living. So if you're stuck in the wilderness in your mindset and you can't see yourself breaking free, you need a revelation. You need to come back to the altar, get to a place of repentance, and allow the Spirit of God to change your life. And I guarantee when you do that, God will begin to manifest himself in your life in a way to make you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers in the revelation. People think God's talking about money when he says, I wish to be all you will prosper me and help me so prosper. He's talking about revelation. When you prosper in the revelation of who he is, you'll find yourself prospering in who Jesus Christ, which will cause the money to come to you. God knows what it takes to get your attention. And he knows what it takes to break the back of the enemy off your life. But he waited on you, he's waiting on me to learn how to say, okay, God, I surrender. No more posing you. I'm not going to resist you anymore. I, I live my life the way I want to live to the full. Now, God, here I am. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I repent before you, God, and I change my life. And guess what? He'll do that. He'll change your thought life in order for your life to change. Your life cannot change until your thought life change. If your thought life doesn't change, your mind is not going to change. Your body's not going to change. Your communication is not going to change. Your ear gates are going to all receive garbage and you become a garbage collector. So if anything that anybody want to dump on you, you collect all this trash and you hold on to it so your treasure becomes hidden in trash. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I believe it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. So we have a treasure in the earth and vessels, that the power may not be of us, but of God. What's that power? The anointing. We have the anointing treasure inside of us, which is Christ Jesus himself, the anointed one. But a lot of people don't know it because they don't study the word of God. If I don't study the word of God to know what God says about me, how can I help change somebody's life if my life is not changing? Every day we're evolving to become better and better stewards 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it takes you, it takes me to take a moment every day to give God praise, to worship him, to study his word, to fast and pray, to get into a place of consecration. In order to break that flesh, Jesus says some things come through prayer and fasting. Why? Some deliverance only come through prayer and fasting. If I don't get to a place where I'm breaking my flesh, guess what's going to happen? Flesh will continue to control me. Take account of your thoughts in this area. When you recognize wrong thought patterns beginning to flow in your mind, talk to yourself a little. Say to yourself, what good will it do to me to be jealous of others? It won't get me blessed. God has individual plans for each of us, and I'm going to trust him to do the best thing for me. It isn't, it isn't any of my business what he chooses to do for other people. Then deliberately and perfectly pray for them to be blessed all the more. Don't be afraid to be honest with God about your feelings. He knows how you feel anyway, so he may, so you may be well, be well as able to talk to him about it. So you can tell God, God, I'm feeling jealous of somebody. God, I feel like I should have what they got, but it don't seem to be happening for me, God. So you tell God what's on your heart. God already knows your heart anyway. So there's nothing you hiding from them. So if you confess your fault to God, the word tells, confess your fault one to another, you may be healed. Why? Because confession is linked to your deliverance. Your confession, my confession, is linked to my deliverance. So when I get to the place in myself and I tell myself, you know what? I was feeling jealous. I was feeling spiteful. I wanted to get revenge. I want to retaliate on somebody because the way they treated me, what they said to me wasn't right, and I'm angry about it. If you don't shut that voice down, that voice of the enemy speaking in your mind, your thought life, will bring you into a place of the wooden mentality, mentality and bondage. And you find yourself imprisoned to the thought life of the enemy and never being free. But God has the remedy. It's called the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washed away all of our sins and iniquities and set us free. And all we have to do is walk in it and trust God's ability to deliver us from the strongholds of the enemy. Hallelujah. And I've said these things to the Lord like this. God, I pray for, whoever the person may be, to bless even more. Call her or him to prosper. Bless him or her in every way. Lord, I'm praying this by faith. In my spirit, I feel jealous of her or him and inferior to him or her. And I choose to do this your way, whether how I feel or not. So when you begin to pray about your feelings, you're letting it go. And when you let it go, God has a way to come into your heart to change your life for eternity. Amen. Set your mind to be happy for others and trust God with yourself. It will take some time and persistence, but when the old mental stronghold has been torn down and replaced by the word of God, you will be on your way out of the wilderness into the promised land. So you want to get into the promised land what God has for you? You got to set your mind on things that are above and not on the earth. In other words, change your attitude. Get the God kind of attitude, the God kind of faith. Jesus said in Mark 11, chapter verse 22, Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. When you have the God kind of faith, the God kind of faith overpowers the thought life of the wooden mentality that holds you into a spiritual place of wandering back and forth for year after year after year in the same old cycle of the mindset, in the same old situation, the same old condition. But the Spirit of the living God says, I come to you in the name of the Lord to break the cycle. And guess what he does? He strips the enemy of his power, his mind, body, control. He delivers you. He sets you free in your inner man. And in your mindset, he delivers you and leads you into victory 
that everything you do from this day forward will cause you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So as we come to close with another lesson, we'll be picking up in the, in the last uh, uh, chapter of the book on next week, the Lord says the same, chapter 25, in the battlefield of the mind, chapter 25, the battlefield of the mind, we're going to talk about, I'm going to do it my way or not at all. I'm going to do it my way or not at all. And we all have said at one point or another on our job, we didn't agree with the, the instructions or the assignments they gave us to do, and they gave you instructions how to do it. And you said, nope, I ain't following that instruction. Do it my way, the shortcut way. And we found out doing shortcuts in life leads to destruction. So I want you to stay encouraged tonight and know that God is on your side. It doesn't matter what you go through. You can make it. I know you can because God is on your side to lead God and direct you into victory every day of your life. So Lord God, tonight I thank you for this lesson. I thank you, Father God, for the word to go across the airways. I thank you for every person that's tuning in tonight, God, that you bless them. That you rain down favor upon their lives, oh God. Bring conviction to all of our hearts, oh God, after hearing this word that will provoke us to change and to righteousness, God. That anything in our hearts is not of you will be stripped out, God, purged through the fire of your spirit. Let the Holy Spirit inside of us, God, begin to prune and pry and convict and change our lives. That we become more and more like you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight, as I do each week. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 10 and 10, So with the mouth confession made of the heart, man believes unto righteous. Romans 10, 9 says, That if thou shalt confess thy mouth, the Lord thy Jesus, believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can receive salvation tonight. The same Jesus we're talking about to change the mindset, to change the attitude, to change the life. He can do it for you that he did it for us. All you got to do is just believe with your heart that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for you. You can be saved. And if you may be a backslider here tonight, you walk with the Lord and you strayed away and went back to your sinful lifestyle, tonight you can come back home. Just like the prodigal son who took his, his, his money, went and lived a riotous life, and a promiscuous life, and when he ran out of everything, he came to himself and said, I'll go back home, tell my father, I'm not worthy to be called your son, just make me as one of your hired servants, and just treat me that way. But the father loved his child so much, he saw his son from a far distance coming back home, you might be that person. Then straight away, and the father sees you at a far distance coming back home. And guess what he did? He killed the fattest calf, put a ring on his finger, a robe on his, on his back and restored him back to his kingship as if he never left. God can do that for you to do, for you tonight, my brother, my sister. So all you got to do is pray this simple prayer with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner or I may have strayed away. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly, unknowingly, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you've been restored back in right standing and right relationship with the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. So welcome to the family of God. And the Lord says the same. We will convene again on next week, uh, dealing with chapter 25, the final chapter of the book. I am so excited that I made it this far, teaching this book by faith. And if, if, you, if anyone know me from my previous life, I would have never done this till now. I would have quit a long time ago. That's how I know God is causing me to mature in the things of God, causing me to grow up and mature in the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding of who he is. Because there are many times I started tasks for the kingdom of God and quit midstream. But for me to actually go through this book and a book prior to this, the strong man, his name was his game. I went through that whole book teaching about different strongholds and then turn around and talk about the battle for the mind. These two books are two powerful books to apply to your library. The strong man, his name, what's his game? You can find these books on Amazon. Amazon has these books. And then the battle for the mind. And I guarantee 
when you start reading intently to hear from the Spirit of the living God, these two books are going to change your life. So you all stay encouraged, stay excited about Jesus, and know that God loves you, and so do I. And Father, we just pray tonight that you cover every person's heart, oh God, mind, body, soul, and the spirit. Father, be, be a shield around about them. Even after they rest tonight, oh God, let them rest in your presence, secure, knowing that you are, Father God, the anchor of their souls, and that you are protected from danger and unseen. And we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. May the grace of God, sweet communion, the Holy Spirit, rest in the Bible with us henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good night. I put the link on the invite for the class tonight to sow a seed. You want to sow a seed into the ministry? Feel free to sow a seed. It goes right back into the ministry for the materials, even to the church. Until next week, you all be blessed and stay excited about Jesus and study your word and know that the word will transform your life forever. Good to see my son on tonight. God bless you, Deacon Davis. Amen, Deacon Middleton. God bless you, my cousin Dina. And all of the rest of you, God bless you. Um, Minister Ben, God bless you. Deacon Joe, bless you all. Wow, quite a few people on tonight. God bless you all, Benita and all the other ones. Eric, my neighbor. Amen, amen. God bless you all for tuning in tonight. And again, I thank you for your support on tonight of the class. And I pray that something has been done to help transform your life forever. Until next week. Shalom, peace be unto you.